Oh boy, this is going to be a big one and it's going to be complicated. Let's talk about the implementation of California's Prop 12 that is now hitting the news as we are six months from it taking effect. Here on NPR, California's new animal welfare law could mean the end of bacon. Oh no. And it goes through uh, painting a sob story at first. Oh, these restaurants are reopening. Now they're not going to have bacon because of Prop 12 because the industry is not compliant with it and blah, blah, blah. So what exactly is Prop 12? So looking up the, um, the uh, actual legislation of it and what was voted on three years ago back in 2018 essentially said that animals have to have enough space to turn around and stretch their limbs when they are in a confinement facility. I'll show you a picture of what a typical sow confinement facility looks like here. That's what it looks like. And what Prop 12 is saying is, hey, a breeding sow has to have at least 24 square feet in order to stretch out her limbs and be able to turn around. Because as you could see in the picture, they cannot do that when they're in a gestating crate or a farrowing crate. They are in a narrow, tight space to keep them densely packed in these buildings for maximum efficiency. 24 square feet is not that much space. That's the size of two bathtubs for a 600 pound animal. It's less than a sheet of plywood in floor space. So it is not that hard of a requirement. But you have the industry not making the adjustment to their breeding facilities, hoping that either the law would be recalled or canceled or somehow overridden. And now they're saying, whoa, is us. We can't handle this situation. And in the article, it actually says that the uh, National Pork Producers Council is going to Congress and saying, you need to give us taxpayers money in order to fix this problem. Now, there's so many things uh, you know, that are right and wrong about all of this. One, should the public have the ability to influence uh, regulation on how things are done on farms? Yes and no. I think it should primarily be in how they spend their money. If animal welfare is that important to the 68% of Californians who voted for this law, why are they still buying the product that's being produced that way in the first place? But also there are entities behind this type of legislation that absolutely want to outlaw and ban meat. Does the industry have a point in saying that, um, there is vague language coming from California on how we you know, need to, to implement these changes. Yes, from the research I've done, there's no um, actual you know, guidance on what California is requiring. But here's the main thing I wanted to take away uh, from, from this situation that's unfolding out there. And we have to go back to 1950s. President Eisenhower was leaving office. He gave the, you know, the famous uh, address warning about the military industrial complex. And I think really he also was speaking or it can be taken to um, apply to any government industrial complex. Right now you have an industry that has a revolving door of regulators into lobby groups, into money that's being funneled over. Last year during the meat shortages, a lot of pork producers had to destroy animals because these big packers that control a lot of the pork production couldn't get their act together on how they were going to handle COVID in their plants and had to shut down. Plus, they could not package their product properly because of just-in-time supply logistics and how they're working everything. And somewhere between three and five million pigs, it's kind of a guess right now, ended up being euthanized because they couldn't get put through the facilities in time and the farmers didn't want to hold on to them and feed them more and the industry didn't want to pay for it and all this. So they ended up just getting gassed or shot or however and ground up in monster wood chippers and composted and guess what the taxpayer picked up the dime for that one not only were the farmers compensated as part of the stimulus bill but the big packers whose very action caused this to happen they were paid off as well and so we have this government industry complex right now in agriculture that is just a wrecking ball moving through the farming communities because the small family farm, the local producers, that is not what's important to them. The bottom line of corporate finance is what they're going after. And they know that they can get the government to do these things for them. So the government is privatizing their profits and socializing their losses. And it's on the back of the taxpayers. So absolutely the taxpayers should have a right to say, 
this is how we want our pork produced. But it also needs to be given with clarity. So it's just a big mess right now that's about to happen. And I'm sure the taxpayers will be on the hook to pick up the slack. But you need to understand that if you are a consumer and you are buying these products at the store, you need to do your due diligence to know the humane and welfare standards that you are supporting with your money in the pork industry. It is the modern farm version of the Russian gulag. We have so many pigs packed into these barns that are causing a lot of issues and it's being supported by a public who continues to buy the products. So if you actually wanna make a change in how animals are treated on the farms, animal welfare, humane handling, all that stuff, the number one way you can do it is to direct your dollars to farms that are actually doing what you want done. Find them out. They can ship to you. They can deliver to you. There's all kinds of mechanisms now in place for you to get food that aligns with your morals and your ethics. So we'll stay on top of this one and see where it goes. Could be a boom for pastured pig producers in California, but I suspect the government is going to suspend the implementation of these rules for the time being because we can't have the voters telling the government what to do. That's just not the way for it to be done. So, till next time, we'll be out in the field getting after it. Catch you all later.